everybody! It is Taylor from Dames All Mode and today I have a really exciting project that I'm starting. On April 7th, Sony Pictures is releasing the new Little Women on digital download and DVD, so it'll be available at home now to watch. And they contacted me and three other costumers and asked us to make a dress inspired by one of the characters from the film. Now each one of us was assigned a different March sister and I feel very lucky that I got Beth, who happens to be my favorite sister of all of them. Uh, so it was a really great thing to be able to get that. I didn't have any input on that. It just kind of happened that way. So I was really excited to be assigned Beth. Um, now, hmm, this is probably a spoiler alert in case you haven't seen the movie or read the book, but it was published in the 1860s. So I think if you don't know the story yet, I mean, that's on you, I think. Um, but if you uh, haven't seen the movie or you don't know the story, then I would skip forward like maybe 30 seconds so I don't give anything away from you. The truth is, is that obviously Beth dies in the movie. So she contracts scarlet fever early in the film. Uh, it weakens her heart and eventually she dies from it, which is so sad. And the way they did that scene in this movie made me just cry and cry and cry. It was really, really beautifully done. Um, so Beth doesn't get the opportunity of the other girls to grow up and get married and have a life outside of her home. Uh, so I took a little bit of liberty with my inspiration and I'm just going to pretend that Beth is fine. You know, maybe she's sick and ailing for the rest of her life, but she's going to make it. Okay guys, this is my version and I want Beth to make it. So I'm just pretending that everything went fine for Beth. She got over that last sickness, she rejoined the family, and now she's just living her life happily in Massachusetts. Uh, I decided that I was going to make um, a wrapper style gown, which was a typical morning, and by that I mean M-O-R-N-I-N-G and not M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. It was morning wear in the 1860s, so it's something casual, something you would wear around your house. It was worn a lot for people who were invalids or who were sick, for pregnant women, or just people who, you know, were going to get up and do their morning chores, not necessarily go out into public, it wouldn't be like a visiting dress or anything. But but something that somebody could wear to be comfortable. So I thought that would be something that Beth would probably wear a lot around the home. She's not feeling great all the time, so she's not gonna be really fancy. So I wanted to make her a casual dress, but something that was also really nice, something she could feel pretty in, something that maybe felt like a little bit of a splurge. I'm sure it was very hard for her to go off and see her sisters going to balls and things like that. So I'm gonna let Beth have her moment and she's gonna get a nice pretty silk dress, even if it is a wrapper style. Now step one in deciding what I want my costume to look like is to actually watch the movie. I was really grateful that Sony gave me a screener copy of this film so I was able to watch it at my leisure, pause, take notes, rewind, and really get a chance to think about Beth, think about her costumes, think about the way she looks in the movie, and think about the feel of her character. This film is available to purchase on digital now, for example, Apple TV, Amazon Prime, Google Play, anywhere where you get your downloads, and it's also available on Blu-ray. It comes with over 45 minutes of bonus features, including a deep dive into Jacqueline Duran's Oscar-winning costumes for the film. She recently won the Academy Award for Best Costume Design this year for her work on Little Women. One thing I noticed over and over again is that Beth often has a lot of sort of pink or plum or purpley colors that are part of her wardrobe. And I really liked that choice because she's one of the only characters who wears those sort of deep rich purples. Um, it's not like she's wearing these elaborate purple dresses, but she'll have little elements of them here and there. I wanted to bring that element of her color story in the movie to my new costume that I'm making. And there's a fabric that I think is gonna work really nicely from Burnley and Trowbridge that has some of those elements to it. So I'm gonna order a swatch of that and and see how that looks. So the pattern that I decided to go with for this project is this uh, pattern from K-Fig. It is KF611, a ladies wrapper or a morning gown. Um, I have never used a K-Fig pattern before, but this is part of Fig Leaf Designs, um, and I am familiar with her patterns and Mackenzie's work, and she does really beautiful stuff, has great instructions, 
and makes really nice patterns. So I'm pretty confident this is gonna work for me. I don't have a lot of experience working with patterns, so this will be an experiment for sure. Um, I'm really excited to get started on it though and to sort of dive into this new style. This seems to me like one of these kinds of gowns that once you make one and you get the method of it down, it's probably really easy to make more. So I hope there are more of these in my future besides just this one that I'm gonna make for Beth. Hey guys, uh, I'm really excited because the fabric for my dress just came in from Burnley and Trowbridge. Um, so I'm gonna take it out right now. I have a sample of it, so I kind of know what it's gonna look like, but I only had a tiny piece and it's such beautiful fabric. So here is the actual stuff. This is a beautiful silk sarsenet, which is a really lightweight, lovely fabric. Oh, it has this beautiful stripe. It's so pretty. So here's the actual color. It's this really beautiful uh, deep pink with like sort of a rosy light purple background. I don't know how to describe it, but the thing that's so wonderful about it is that it's just this like beautiful, wonderful, flowy, drapey, lightweight silk. Oh, it's so lovely and it's really smooth and soft. This is just going to make for the most beautiful um, skirt. It's going to be so flowy and pretty and perfect for springtime. Oh, the like flowers outside are just starting to bloom right now and they're so beautiful. And this is just like the perfect fabric to drape yourself in for springtime. Oh, I can't wait to use this. Thank you, Barnley and Trowbridge for having such beautiful things. The first step in the costume process is to cut out the pattern pieces and then make a basic muslin mock-up of the bodice to check fitting. Alright, so I have my bodice mock-up done out of my muslin and it's not terrible. Uh, it's not great, but I think I know where the alterations need to be made. Uh, the fit along the front is pretty good. Um, this is something I always have a problem with, which is that my back is too loose. It's always gappy here. I have like a narrow back. I don't know if that's a thing, but every pattern I have, I always have to sort of narrow the back. So I think what I'm gonna do is take in a little bit of the back side seams because the center back is cut on the fold, so I can't really take out anything from the center. Instead, I have to take out some from this, the center back seam here which should tighten it up along the bottom there um, and of course the other big problem is that it's too short I mean, you can see here's my waist and here's the bottom of the pattern I have a really long torso so this is a very typical problem for me I need to add several inches I'm here so I get to the waist now in the 1860s your waist is a little bit higher than it is with later periods um, but even so this is still I mean this is way too short as you can see I need to add Ugh, like a hand's breadth along the back um, and then several inches along the front. So I will do that and then I'll make a secondary mock-up and try that. The second mock-up was fit with the help of my good friend Jenny Rose before we had to social distance ourselves. She is taking in a little more along the side seams to get the fit a bit more snug. It's always easier to fit these when you have a buddy who can work with you on the back. And I appreciate her taking the time to help me with this dress. I also appreciate how nicely she coordinated with the pattern I'm using. Then it's time to mark the changes I made on my second fitting muslin before I cut it out of the actual fabric. My lining fabric is a lovely cotton sateen, also from Burnley and Trowbridge, which will give a nice base for my delicate silk sarsenet fabric.
Okay, so I have got my um, lining sewn up out of the actual fabric that I'm going to use for the lining of the dress. This is that cotton sateen from Burnley and Trowbridge. The back looks like it's fitting much better. It's nice and tight now instead of loose. I can honestly probably oh, even still take out a little bit more. Let me wait, let me finish it first. So I don't have any darts in it yet. I tend to like to close the front first and then put the darts in so I know how much play I have to deal with. I have made the changes to this including um, adding the length to it, taking out some of the extra up here because it was like way too big in this part. And now I'm just going to pin it closed along the front which is how the actual dress will close. I think I'll probably use hooks and eyes because it's really easy and I really really hate sewing buttonholes. And this is going to be underneath everything anyway, so it doesn't really matter if it looks spectacular. So I'm going to take the easy way out if I have the option to do it. Just trying to keep this evenly pinned all along the front. Okay, and now I'm going to put in my darts. And these will just be approximations. Obviously, I'm not sewing in the darts permanently right now. I just want to make sure that it fits properly with those. I'm just sort of guessing by feel where these need to go. And then I'll even them up later when I actually am putting them on the pattern itself. Okay. That looks pretty good, actually. I'm pretty pleased with the fit. And the back looks good too. I don't want to tighten this too much because I want to be able to obviously move and bend. This is a wrapper, so it's supposed to be a more casual, loosely fitting piece that allows you to sort of move around and do chores and not be encumbered by uh, really tight fitting garments. So it's okay that there's some looseness in the back because it means I can put my arms forward and not have a problem with it. Oh, I suppose I should tell you about what I'm wearing under this gown, since it is so critical to getting the historical silhouette correct. My corset is an 1860s gourd corset from Red Threaded. And next I have a corded petticoat, which gets its stiffness from rows and rows of cotton cording. On top of that is a ruffled petticoat that gives extra fluff. And then the final layer is a simple basic petticoat to smooth the whole silhouette out. This could easily be worn with a full hoop as well, but I prefer the softer, more casual look of just petticoats. Okay, so I now have the front bodice pieces mostly done. Um, we are now looking at the inside. Um, this is what the outside looks like. It's got some of the silk on it. Um, I decided to finish it off with hook and eye tape instead of doing individual hooks and eyes because I'm really lazy. I really hate sewing in hooks and eyes. So I'm just gonna cheat and use hook and eye tape because it's an awesome sewing hack. Um, now, the instructions for this actually wanted me to put the darts in before I put the clasps on, but I, I really prefer to have the front totally finished and then to put the darts in once you can put it on yourself because then you can fit them perfectly to you and you're not just like guessing um, where they need to go. So I'm, I'm deviating from the instructions here. I'm gonna do this first. So I'm gonna finish all these and then I'm gonna sew the back piece on to either side and then I'm gonna pin the shoulders closed, those don't get sewn yet, and then I will try it on and I will put in the darts where they need to go.
All right, so I'm pretty pleased with the work that I've done today. Um, I'm actually just gonna finish up today by sewing down these darts and then also finishing the neckline, which I currently just have pinned down. I'm just gonna hand sew this down. Um, it's, it's such a small amount. It's not really enough to get my sewing machine ready for. Um, and then I'll be done for the day. And then tomorrow we're gonna start attaching the skirts. Oh, now I have to do piping first. <sighs> All right. Tomorrow I'm gonna put on the piping. I'm very nervous about doing it. I do not wanna do it, but it will make the finished dress look a lot better, so I can't skip it. I just have to be brave. <sighs> so one tricky thing about this pattern, and I think everything with the 1860s, is that I have to make piping. I have a very love-hate relationship with piping. I love it because it looks beautiful and a piped seam is like, it's so good and I am utterly perplexed by piping I have done it before on one costume no I'm sorry two costumes um, I don't remember how I did it I know how to make the piping that's not the hard part but how you like insert it it completely baffles me so I'm gonna make some piping and then I'm just gonna try and see if I can make it work the only issue is I don't really have the right supplies for it so um, I had planned at some point to go to Joann's and pick up some like little random bits for this like matching thread, which I don't have, uh, and cording to use for the piping. Um, but we're all currently quarantined because of coronavirus. So I don't even know if Joann's is open. I'm certainly not gonna go out and look for it. So I've gotta kind of make do with what I have here at home. And the only thing that I could find after 45 minutes of digging through every single little bin and drawer in my ridiculous sewing hoard is this one skein? Skein? I don't know what this is called. It's yarn. It's a bundle of uh, actually very lovely alpaca yarn. I don't think it's the right weight. It feels like I think it's way too heavy so I might have like the world's biggest piping but it is sort of squishy so I'm hoping maybe that'll work. Bodice um, darts are now sewn in. Here's the inside. So all I have left now to do is to pipe the bottom edge um, of the bodice and then I can start working on the skirts. So I am very nervous about piping. It doesn't make sense to me. I can't envision how it's supposed to work. Um, but I have my pre-made piping cord, which is nice and pretty. It's very easy to make. Um, and I have my instructions. So I'm gonna read them and try and figure this out. All right, so now I have all my piping pinned on here. Now, what should work is that once I sew it down, then everything will get flipped. And you'll have this nice finished looking seam. And then everything gets stitched down on the inside so it encloses everything. Fingers crossed. All right, and here is my piped seam. Looks pretty good. Let's see, is it going to work when I flip it? Oh yeah, I think that's actually going to work nicely. Okay, I am all done with the bodice now. I am just so happy with how this turned out. The beauty of this um, piping is that not only do you get like this really gorgeous finish on the outside, but then you get this beautiful finish on the inside too because you like turn it under 
and then whip stitch everything down and it just kind of like neatly wraps everything up for you so you don't have like a bunch of frayed ends and stuff. All right, well, I'm totally converted to Piping World. Team Piping, this is the best. Now it's time to add the skirts. This pattern calls for the skirts to be gauged or cartridge pleated, but because of how thin my fabric is, I don't think that's a good option for me. Instead, I am doing small knife pleats to gather the fabric into the waist. Once the skirts are all sewn on, I'm doing a quick try on because I can't resist seeing how that beautiful silk is going to flow when I'm wearing it. Now it's time for the front panels to be gathered onto the shoulders. This is what allows for that loosely fitted blousy front that is the hallmark of a wrapper gown. Once the shoulders get sewn, it makes for a nice finish to the front of the dress. All right, the bodice of this dress is now done. Um, I have bound the neckline with a bias strip. I have the sleeve edges done. Um, those are also bound, um, sorry, not bound, those are um, finished with piping. I have pre-made all the sleeves, all, <laughs> both the sleeves, um, including doing the cuffs with another to them. So these are just going to get gathered down and then set into the arm size. The sleeves are sewn on by hand, which makes it easier to manage the gathers. And then the dress gets hemmed, the final step. Now it's time to put it all on. Please subscribe and check out my channel to see more historical costuming. Have a great day!